Hi and welcome to my channel. In today's CSS animation effects tutorial, I will show you how to use the several CSS mask properties to create the animation you can see on my screen. It can be used in many ways to achieve various cool CSS effects. Another example I have come up with is this CSS animation that I have added to the employees section of an about page. I will link the source code and the written tutorial, which is available on my blog for both projects below for you. To start, I have a basic project already set up. In the HTML, I added the head and body tags and also linked the style sheet. In the CSS file, I have imported the Roboto contents font family, set up some CSS variables in the root, and for each element, I reset the styling and applied Roboto as the font. The project also has an image folder, which contains a circular SVG and the two photographs we will be using. I will link to the SVG and the images in the description. I also have Live Server enabled, so the page reloads automatically when I save changes. Let's add the HTML markup. I am adding a header tag which will contain all the other elements for this project. The first element I am adding is a div with the ID image underscore one. This will hold the image showing a crowd in central London waiting for the bus. Below it, I am adding an H1 with the class center, the ID heading 1, and the text Escape Your Mundane Every Days. All this content will be visible before the user hovers over the header area and the CSS animation executes. Next, we are going to add the image and the text that will be shown after the animation. I am defining a div with the ID image 2. Inside this, I am nesting another div with the class center. Then inside this div, I am adding a paragraph with the ID heading 2 and the text and discover adventure. I am also adding another paragraph for the subtitle and a button to encourage visitors to book. This is the HTML done. Let's add the necessary CSS. First, I am making the header as wide and as high as the page by defining width as 100% and the height as 100VH, which makes the element as high as the viewport of the browser. I am also giving it a relative position. This is important as I want to position all the background images relative to the header. Next, I am defining some rules for the elements with the IDs image1 and image2. They have some CSS properties in common, so I am setting them for both at the same time to avoid repetition. To remove them from the normal document flow, I am adding position absolute here so I can position them freely on the page. Then I am adding inset 0. This basically tells the browser that I want the divs to be 0% away from the left and the right sides of the header and 0% away from its top and bottom. By doing this, I can achieve that these divs are just as big as their relative position parent, which is our header element. I am also adding the background size cover property here to ensure the images fill out the complete area that is available. I don't want the images to get repeated, so I am adding background repeat, no repeat. The background position should be center, but I made a typo here and only noticed after recording. The project will still work though. You can use this property to define whether the position should be center, to the left, and so on. Next, I am assigning a background image to the first div. I want to remove the color, so I am adding a filter with a grayscale of 100%. I also want to make it a bit darker, so the yellow color of the headline pops more. For this, I can add brightness and pass 50% into the CSS function. To ID image 2, I am also adding a background image. Then I am defining the property mask image and provide the URL to my circle SVG as the URL parameter. Please add both mask image and hyphen webkit mask image properties so it works in nearly all browsers. If I save the changes, you can see that the gray image has been cut out repeatedly by our circle SVG. Of course, this is not the look we are going for. To switch off this repetition, I can add mask repeat, no repeat. Now there is only one cutout in the top left corner. Finally, I am defining mask position as center and mask size as 100%. The cutout now originates from the center and is as wide as the screen. To ensure all the grayscale image is gone, let's increase the size to 150%. 
I initially don't want the cutout to show at all, so I can make the mask size 0. When I hover over the header though, I do want it to appear. To test this, I am using the selector header, colon, hover, and then ID image 2 to change the size to 150%. And now, when I hover over the header, the scenic image appears. Let's define the CSS animation next. I am adding add keyframes with the name animate. At 0%, so at the start of the animation, I want the mask size to be 0%. At the end of it, so at 100%, the mask size should increase to 150%. We can now add this animation to the header hover rule we just defined. I am setting the animation name as animate. The animation duration should be 3 seconds. And when the CSS animation finishes, I want it to retain the last keyframe so that the scenic image continues to be visible. For this, I can use animation fill mode forwards. If I now hover over the header, the animation appears. The only problem is that when I stop hovering over it, it immediately bounces back to the old photo. We can control this with the CSS animation play state property. Simply add animation play state paused to the image to selector and animation play state running to the hover rule. Then copy over the animation name, duration and fill mode rules to the image to selector. Now it all works as expected. The only thing left is to style the text. To keep this video short, and as it does not relate to the CSS animation, I am not going to go through it much. All I am really doing is I position anything that is in the center class in the middle of the screen. To the headings, I am assigning a responsive font size and am adding text shadows, font weights and colors. The complete code is linked in the description, so if you would like to style it the same way, you are welcome to reference it. Additionally, I have also created a written tutorial on my blog, which is linked in the description. This also explains how to do the about page animation, which you can see here. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. For any questions or comments, please leave them below and I will try to answer. Thanks so much for watching and see you next time.